Hey guys, this is Brandon Owsley, Brando So, uh, coming here to do a new video. Uh, finally got my hands on the new Michael Jackson album, Escape. Just came out earlier this week, Tuesday to be exact. It's been five years since Michael Jackson has passed, as we all know. Uh, there have been a, a lot of things that have come out um, posthumously. Um, he he and he, he re recorded so much stuff before he died during his lifetime and you know we've we've had good things that have come out since his death and bad things one notable release that got um that came out 2010 was the michael album uh which gained a lot of mixed reception mi mixed to negative reception and it wasn't about the fact that the material that was on that album was nothing more than a producer patchwork it was that there was no real clue of who was singing on those songs so fast forward four years later and escape comes out okay now, I will admit, when I first heard that uh, Michael Jackson compilation was coming out of vaulted material, I really did not know what to think. When, when the news dropped in April that a new Michael Jackson release was, at, in fact, coming out with L.A. Reid um, being the spearhead of it all, with uh, uh, Timbaland doing production, L.A. Reid doing production, Stargate doing production, and Rodney Jerkins and others who were, you know, going to be doing the production for this release. I really had no, I, I really didn't know what to think. Okay, uh, I was excited, but at the same time, I was like, okay, this is just some, some more stuff that they're going to throw at the public and, and the Michael Jackson community. A lot of these tracks on this particular release have already leaked in some fashion before or after Michael Jackson's death. Um, so I wasn't that surprised with it. Now what this compilation does successfully is um, give you an alternate view into Michael Jackson's vaulted material. It gives you uh, a more up close and personal view of his material that he did uh, throughout the 80s and the 90s. Um, and you know, they, they got remixers, they got producers and to remix the material to add a more modernized production. And while this is a great thing, it also is the part that hinders the project as well. Songs like Do You Know Where Your Children Are, which is a I'll take from 1991, The Dangerous Era. Um, and it suffers from, to me, overproduction. They try to go back and um, you know, do Michael Jackson's thriller sound and update it for this t today's pop landscape. You know, the EDM, the the EDM sound, and do it. And and while it's tolerable, I just felt like they just overdid it. Um, another song that really killed it for me was the Blue Gangsta, which I was never really a big fan of that song, but. Same with Do You Know Where Your Children Are. They tried to update it and put it on this EDM type production that really does nothing to move it, you know, to, to move Michael Jackson's rhythmic um, production of the original. It just kind of just stays there and it just doesn't move me. On some tracks, they do a great job, actually. Um, I love the, what they did for Loving You, which is a 1987 bad outtake. Um, they put a n whole new spin on it, and um, that's not to say that it's better or worse than the original. I just like what they did to it. It actually, it works because this is a, it's a song that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of R&B artists are doing now, and they're putting the soulful beats, and you got the, you know, uh, uh, you know, it sounds like something that would be played on the radio today, and it actually works for it. Jackson's um, voice and it works for the production so I like what they did with that. Another highlight of mine is the track Chicago which is a 1999 I'll take um, from the Invincible Sessions. Um, I like that they put a more modernized hip-hop uh, rhythm to it and it doesn't take away from Michael's voice. Um, it, it really doesn't. It really matches just like Loving You it really matches his voice and in a way 
you know, it could be played on the radio. I can hear this being played on the radio and I would have no problem with it. One more highlight of mine that I just love, 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 love what they did was um, uh, Escape. I forgot the song for a minute, but Escape. That to me is the best remix on this particular project when it came to the remixes. They took that song and took it to a whole nother level. To me, that eclipses the that the original, the leaked version that came out slightly before Michael's death. I mean, they really took it and put the horns on it. They have the beats, the, I mean, it's so soulful and funky. It has the, that funky bottom to it that just, oh, I, I mean, it just really knocked me out when I first heard it. I said, let this be the next single. One track that I really felt awkward about when it came to the remixes and the reworks was um, A Place of, With No Name. I just felt like a track as intimate as that, you shouldn't be putting all of those different things on it, but it works in a way. Again, they kind of tweaked it a little bit with the remix version that was just like, they, they just took it and put this, it sounds like if you ever, if you ever heard Outkast's Morris Brown from the Idlewild album, and then you listen to the new version of A Place With No Name, you kind of get what I'm going at. It doesn't sound exactly like that song. They just put too many drums and they, I mean, but it, but it, it's, it's cool, you know, it's good. Overall, for the remix side, they did a reasonable job. I thought that um, some some of it worked, some of it didn't. I can say for the most part, all of the originals on this particular um, compilation for the deluxe edition um, was good. You don't get the originals with the regular edition, which will look silver. Um, it will, I, I think the regular version comes in a jewel case. This comes in a digi pack. So, um, yeah, so this, this is the, uh, the deluxe edition. And if you have the deluxe edition, you're lucky because you'll get the original versions of the songs that were uh, reworked for this particular compilation. For the most part, the originals are prime MJ. I have absolutely no problem with any of the originals. Um, because I, like I said, I've heard 70% of the leaked versions and it's interesting that they would add the alternative mixes for some of these songs instead of their leaked versions. Love Never Felt So Good, classic, um, MJ Rarity, uh, from 1983. That vocal, that, um, the composition, the, the piano, how Michael's voice crescendos and, and rises and falls. I mean, it's a very dramatic vocal track that to me is one of his best vocals I've ever heard and again with the remix version it works perfectly when I first heard it I was like yes six Chicago excellent I mean that's probably one of my favorite tracks on this particular compilation it has that um, invincible era production to it loving you I already discussed that song classic you know, bad 1987 outtake. It reminds me a lot of Stevie Wonder. If you listen to like prime era Stevie Wonder, 1970s, his voice kind of evokes Stevie Wonder's voice, in my opinion. A Place With No Name, now this, that song has been talked about for ever since Michael passed. Um, Slave to the Rhythm, another highlight of mine when it comes to the original versions. Uh, this, like I said, this, this, uh, track comes from 1991 uh, the dangerous sessions it's better than the remix uh, to me the remix just did not hold up the original has that Latin feel that Latin funk feel to it and it worked do you know where your children are this is not one of my favorites I just haven't grown on it yet it's a good song but I just haven't grown to love it yet you know, it's another um, cautionary social political tale about, you know, parents letting their children out um, in the wee hours of the night and then not coming back. Um, the original title for the song, I think, was 12 O'Clock. 
Uh, Blue Gangsta, another one of my, I don't think it's one of my favorites either. Um, has that hip hop groove to it. They did nothing. I mean, when they tried to rework this for the um, for the remixes, I don't think it did anything for the song. This, the original version, the leaked version, never did much for me either. Um, Escape, another song that, you know what? I love the remix version. This song just, it kinda, I think this was, was recorded, if I'm not mistaken, during 1999. Um, it definitely has a lot of hidden codes in it um, when it comes to, you know, Michael talking about being held down by the industry and, you know, um, being criticized by the media. It's one of those songs. And, you know, I love it. I, I love what it, it, it's a message. But when it comes down to the production, I just think that it kind of falls flat. Um, you also get the remix version with Justin Timberlake of um, Love Never Felt So Good. I hate it. 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 I love it. Justin Timberlake. I'm not a Justin Timberlake fan, and this is nothing against Justin, but I can tell that they added that song, that remix, for endorsement just to help the, you know, push more copies of this album for it to, you know, because, you know, Justin is the, the cat, the big cat in pop right now. So, they said, you know, since Michael Jackson is one of your biggest idols, I guess you can be on this particular project. Um, it just doesn't do much for me. It doesn't do much for the original. Uh, Justin's voice falls flat. So how do I feel about Escape overall? Um, I feel as if the producers that were enlisted to do the reworks and the remixes for these eight songs, these eight tracks, did a decent job. They did, you know, it's definitely not uh, something where I, I can tell where they're just trying to, you know, play around with the songs and, you know, they, they stay, for the most part, they stay true to the original concept and the original intent of Michael Jackson's songs. It's not perfect. To me, you know, people are saying, oh, it's the second coming of Michael Jackson. I don't think it's the second coming of anything. It's just decent. Escape is not a wasted opportunity. It's a decent uh, look at Michael Jackson's vaulted material and um, also how modern pop producers were going to be able to take those songs and put a new spin on them for this generation. And it succeeds. It succeeds um, for the most part. It succeeds. If I was to rate this out of five stars, I would give it a 3.5. Maybe I'm being too generous, but that's what I would give it.